check, check, check. What is up? Looks like I'm live. Hey, I'm uh, Jonathan Crane. I'm a mediocre Cat 2 cyclist out of Birmingham, Alabama. Talking about Littleton Twilight tonight. Um, should be an interesting race. So, first thing I noticed was that... Let me put this list up here. First thing I noticed tonight that was interesting was that Rodriguez, who I thought was out still with the collarbone. Here we go. This is the Bike Reg registration list, but I see Alfredo Rodriguez right there. We'll see if he actually shows up. He might just be pre-reg because the whole team was pre-reg, but he's still sitting in second in the points overall. I don't think he's actually going to be back tonight, but we'll see if, uh, if he shows up. Uh, we got Ama Insek. He hasn't been doing everything with Best Buddies, but it looks like they've swapped out uh, Curtis White. I don't see him down here. Yeah, no Curtis White tonight, but they do have Ama Insek for Best Buddies. Um, It looks like Legion is sending. So the Williams brothers are at the Commonwealth Games still, I think. Uh. I think those are still going on, or they're at least still over there. So they are not here, but that is not really going to affect Legion that much because they sent Ty Magner, and I think Ty Magner is actually probably the strongest, most well-rounded guy. Uh, Clever Martinez, you see not in the red there, but blue next to him, uh, had a big week at Intelligentsia. He won the overall at Intelligentsia, which is like the first first big one for him i would say and then he was second last week at the uh the acc so intelligence is a full week plus of racing um but he was he won the overall and then he was second or third on the acc points one night of it was an acc points race uh, we got Brandon Fury from Project Echelon in the red jersey there. He is leading. That's Ty Magner I mentioned a second ago. Ty is easy to spot on the Legion train because he's got those Stars and Stripes bands uh, on one side. He was national champion of something at some point, so that's what I always look for. But he's also got a pretty uh, distinctive style on the bike. Looks like Cliff Bar brought the Malerby brothers here tonight. So... Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure this was the race where it was raining like crazy last year. Uh, everyone from Legion got a call up. They made it really hard from the start and like just blew the race to bits from the gun. Um, it is wet tonight, but it is not currently raining. It rained during the women's race at some point. It looks like it stopped. So we got not the exact same conditions as last year, but this is the first uh, wet pro men's race of the year, I think. Yeah, it rained earlier. It looks like it's been raining kind of on and off, so I, it could start up again, I guess. Uh, during the women's race, it looked like it was kind of starting and stopping. That could have been, you know, it's hard to tell on a 720p feed what is rain versus, uh, you know, the camera's just not picking up because it doesn't have high enough resolution or whatever. But my cat is going crazy looking at something. I don't think it's going to split from the gun like it did last year. Um, it's just not raining as, as crazy as it was. Although, so it looks like somebody's making it hard from the gun. I'm not sure if, uh, if Automatic is going to have a full team here. I know for Intelligentsia Cup, they just kind of had the hit squad. Uh, Davey was out there with Tom. It looks like that's Tom. Tom was on the front row. It looks like that's him going, like, fourth wheel through the first turn. Um, if they do have a, a team here, the rest of them are a little farther back. Looks like we maybe got a, a Malerby brother from Cliff Bar. So this makes it, a, the wet roads make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more technical, a little bit more opportunity to split it. So I think some riders, yeah, that looks like uh, one of the Malerby brothers and Magner going hard off the front early. Ooh, oh man, almost took him into the into the barricade. That's a that's a rough situation because you know you're overlapping like they were with Malerby on the outside. If he pushes you wide, you don't want to be leaned over and touching brakes when it's wet like this. When it's wet, if you touch brakes at all while you're also not upright while you're 
putting force sideways onto the bike and the tire breaks free, you're done. So good, good save by Malerby there. I think we're going to get a replay of it. Yeah, he's just barely overlapping wheels. I mean, you could say that's his fault for overlapping wheels. Ty, Ty had the right to take it wide. Maybe he didn't want to take it that wide. Looks like those two and then Gibbons on the front doing it for himself. Uh, that might be just the result of the fact that Gibbons is the only one who got a call up or he might be the only one. Yeah, I guess this is just the cursed race. Cursed or, I don't know, so, some rain makes it interesting sometimes. So maybe we'll see something a little different. Uh, it feels to me like <laughs> maybe this, you know, not to pull on the tinfoil hat this early, but, um, you know, I've put my theories out there about Williams Brothers own Blazers, so Blazers has been kind of, I don't know, I don't know if I want to say subordinate or whatever, but Blazers guys are not like Chop and Legion guys, you know? Um, But with the Williams Brothers at the Commonwealth Games, maybe Blazers is just off the leash a little bit, but it feels like in the last couple of weeks, Blazers have kind of come into their own in a new way you can see all the spray coming off those tires that makes it really hard to sit in the peloton yeah ben you're you're right there i mean if you're overlapping wheels you got to protect your front wheel it just becomes harder to protect your front wheel when you can't brake so that's uh yeah but you got the whole road to work with when you're in a two-man breakaway like that all right, I'm muting them. They're doing an ad for this. Envy, Envy's making frames now, I guess. I don't know. If that's what a uh, Cliff Bar is on. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why they're holding this gap at like it's. It seems like they just can't pull it back. I don't know if Tom maybe doesn't want it or if he's trying to flick other people through. Right as I say that, it looks like he shut it down. I wonder if this is gonna blow up behind. I think we're gonna see more riders pulled than we normally see. Um, I don't think it's going to blow up like it did last year where it was a tiny group after the first like five or ten laps, but uh, it looks like the way these guys want to race it is going to put more and more guys on the back foot. And like I said, it's just harder to sit in the pack with all that spray coming off the road. So the the place in the pack where you would be getting the most draft normally, you are still getting good draft, but you're also getting just water in your face constantly, which sucks. But it looks like most everybody important is up here. Gibbons. Magner, uh, Malervi Brothers, Beery, think maybe Spencer Movenzada up there. Uh, I always got to mention the cyclocross people. So I saw that Scott Funston from, he races for Blue, the, the brand Blue Competition Cycles. Uh, on the cyclocross side, I guess he is probably local to this race. This is the only ACC race he's done this year, but kind of a, a cyclocross wild card to look out for um it's talking about cyclocross today it's no coincidence that you look at the top guys in the world vanderpool van air pitcock even pogachar has a, a bit of a cross background not world cups and stuff as much but i think he's like slovenian cross national champion but racing cyclocross makes you a very good bike racer also lance hate from legion is here uh He's also a cyclocross dude. He raced cyclocross under the, the Legion banner all last year. I think he was top 10 in nationals. I definitely saw him in nationals. Um, yeah, it looks like Gibbons doesn't want to take any chances. Uh, not seeing any teammates for him. I know that Ed Veal had a really bad crash recently. Ed Veal was the Canadian sort of diesel powerhouse that Automatic had kind of picked up this season. They he had been sort of guest riding for them, and then as time went on, I think he's become more of like a full member of the team. Looks like we got some Automatic fans in the chat. So do you know if uh, Automatic has a full squad here and I'm just not seeing them? They're not pre-regged. I've got the pre-regged list, right, pre list right here and not seeing anybody from Automatic pre-regged. Um, yeah, I think Clever Martinez, though, at, coming off the Intelligentsia weekend and with no Williams brothers to contend with, 
I think Martinez might be going for it tonight. Um, let's see if Travieso is here. He's been going really, really well for Blazers recently. Also, Travieso. Yeah, Frank Travieso is here as well. I don't know how he is in the rain, but he's been racing real aggressive. Um, other people I'm seeing, Movenzada is definitely here for Butcher Box. He's been. All season, he's been looking for a breakaway that he could get in that could go. Uh, I'm I'm glancing down the list here. I think I've mentioned most everybody. So Legion has uh, Magner, Eder Freer, uh Gavin Hoover. Okay, Gavin Hoover is another big one to look out for. Gavin Hoover, if you've watched the uh, the series about track racing on GCN, Gavin Hoover is like the one American racer in that. Um, and he was like the last lead out guy for Ty last week. Uh, really good track racer. Raced the, what is the name of that, that series? Track Champions League. Did really well in the Track Champions League uh, last year. That ser series on GCN was really good. Looks like uh, Cliff Bar moving up again. Maybe even beyond moving up, maybe attacking over the top. It looks like they see the opportunity. Uh, even though Legion is doing the Legion thing, they're massing on the front, getting the train together. We got two Cliff Bar riders. I wonder if that's both Malervi brothers. So there is Connor Malervi and Kevin Malervi, I believe, are their names. Let's see. Yes, Connor and Kevin. I wonder if that's both of them going off the front right here. This is a pretty wide course, so I guess if it has if one stop of this series has to be cursed with rain, it's kind of good that it's this one. There are not any super tight pinch points where things would get really sketchy and uh there's not any like downhills into turns that would get hairy. The current uh I love the current Athens course, the course with the the downhill, but that course would be particularly hairy if it was raining like this on it. Looks like they're not giving those Cliff Bar guys any oxygen. Seeing several Avolo riders kind of hanging out near the front. I would not the super like fluorescent yellow bikes right there. I would not be surprised if we start seeing them taking some potentially ill-fated short rips off the front, but definitely animating it, keeping it interesting. That's the uh Mike Creed run junior development team. Uh, it seems like he likes to just keep those kids attacking and going hard because you're not going to learn a lot. Ooh, this might be Ethan Crane from, uh, from, yeah, I think this is, uh, yeah, there's Fury in red. I think that was Ethan Crane from, uh, Project Echelon going off the front. This lap is the seven laps in point sprint. So I think we're going to see. I wonder if Crane is just trying to hoover those points up to take them away from other people here. Because there's the leaderboard. Fury from Project Echelon, Ethan Crane's team, is in the lead. So I wonder if he's going to try to just... Crane is in fifth there, so maybe he's going to try to move up. Yeah, Avolo is truly pulling the junior role in this, which is just to go, go ballistic the whole time. Just take, like, insane Hail Mary rips. But especially in a world where legion is controlling everything and it's kind of uh and it's it's kind of boring sometimes i'm kind of glad that there's a team that's just you know throwing caution to the wind and going for it regardless of how how cursed those moves are connor saley is money in the rain okay so connor saley butcher box rider this year uh Oh no, Saley, did Saley move over? Let me see where Saley is at now. Did Saley go from Butcher Box to Blazers? I think I think I'm misspeaking there. Saley is on Blazers now. I was thinking last year. I guess that's maybe because he hasn't had any huge rides this year, so I haven't seen him in the Blazers jersey as much, although he's been solid. Yeah, he is Blazers now. It seems like 
almost everyone from from Butcher Box turned over last year, except for Mo Venzato. But it also doesn't feel like they took Mo Venzata and like built a team around him. It feels like they kind of just grabbed from everywhere. Um, I did I did a race a couple of weeks ago in Nashville with Corey Lockwood, who was on Legion, then he was on another team. Now he's on Butcher Box. Um, yeah. Saley was caught in that crash last year at um was that at Salt Lake at the it was at that course that goes through the weird mall thing and it had like it it sort of uh the road kind of jogged left but there were slabs of concrete that didn't jive with that and there was it was a real weird course it went through basically like one of those outdoor mall things like sort of fake downtown outdoor malls and uh there were a few big crashes, and I, I remember now he was caught up in one of those. All right, we're we're after the uh, seven seven laps in point scream here. Looks like Freire is just uh, Fury got the points. Fury and Crane, damn, they're hoovering up those points, moving up in the standings as much as they can, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what went down with Butcher Box either, but a lot of guys uh, moved on and moved over to other teams and stuff. And they haven't been terrible this year. It just seems like they're in a a building year. They don't have any like star rider, and they didn't. I mean, I guess I don't know what their situation is or was, but if it were me, I would say if we're keeping Movenzada and Movenzada consistently. He can get top tens pretty consistently. We need to build build a team around him. Although I'm not sure how you build a team around a breakaway rider. I don't know. Maybe you get a lot of aggressive breakaway riders, and some of those are sacrificial lambs that go kind of early. Yeah, this is Gavin Hoover, who was, uh, I was just talking about, track rider, uh, track champions league last year, just signed with Legion. Setting a super hard. Uh, that's tough. <laughs> that's tough to say, Michael. Is this Legion's A squad? Um, I'm gonna say it is right now because Justin and Corey are not. Uh, they're not each not 100. percent Justin had that injury early this season. Corey had a kid this year. Um, both of them went to race the uh, Commonwealth Games. But I don't think the fact that they are not here means this isn't their A squad because I think I said it at the beginning of the stream, but I think that Ty Magner is actually the strongest guy in America. Most well-rounded, uh, can win from a breakaway, can go solo. Can We haven't seen anyone go solo this year, but Magner could do it. Uh, and he can sprint with the best sprinters. Unless, of course, is super hilly, he's good he's good on that athens course that has the hill now that puts a lot of the bigger sprinters out the back um yeah i think boardman boardman for hoover is kind of a one for one then, or boardman for free air however you want to look at that i think that's like you know as good of a a trade out so it's like uh this is like their a a2 team and their a1 team would be Williams brothers and uh, Boardman. Boardman is a tractor though, he and he's super valuable just for the way the Legion likes to race, um, setting a hard tempo the whole time. But it seems like seems like Hooper is fully capable of filling those shoes. Although it looks like maybe we got another cliff bar attack here. They made the race too small so that uh, they can talk to Martinez here, but. I think I saw a cliff bar rider trying to go up the go up the road. Yeah, Lancey Pants is is solid. That's his um Instagram handle, I think, or Twitter or something. Lance hate it. Seems like Clever Martinez is not taking any chances though. You can see him up there with the GoPro on top of his head. Uh it pretty much in the top ten the whole race, and that's how he was racing Intelligentsia Cup. So he won Intelligentsia Cup series overall, and it seems like that's given him a little bit more confidence 
Speaking of which, maybe he's going moving up right now. Yeah, he's he's moving into the Legion train. He just took second wheel right there, which he also did last week at the uh, the Lake Bluff race of the ACC. As Legion, as Gavin was leading out Ty Magner, Ty left a little bit of a gap, and that might have been a a sprinter's gap where the sprinter kind of leaves a gap so that they can accelerate still in the slipstream before they pop out. But Ty left a little gap to Gavin Hoover, and Clever actually slotted in the middle of that like he just did right here. So he is proving he's not afraid to get into the Legion train. So maybe maybe my whole theory about the late Legion Blazers thing is uh, is overblown or incorrect, or maybe they're letting him in. I don't know. Yeah, it seems like Cliff Bar guys are going... I want to see the back of this field now. I'm trying to see how many. Uh... <laughs> Live from Masters Nats. Hey, good luck, Sean. Here we go. Wow. Speak of the devil. We were just talking about hate it. There's Lance hate it going up the road. Uh, Great cyclocross racer. I was mentioning mentioning all of the cyclocrossers here because I think cyclocrossers are always gonna ex gonna excel in this weather just because we we race in it more, we ride in it more. Um, one of my favorite tour stages of all time was the Lance. Uh, sorry, the Lars Bohm. I got thinking about Lance because he's right there. Lars Bohm stage win. Um, when it was like the year after he was cyclocross world champion. He had moved over to the road. What's up, Rugia? Welcome. Um, and there was a Perry Roubaix stage. It was one of the first modern ones where they put a significant amount of cobbles into a flat, uh, flat Tour de France stage. And so it was muddy on the sides of the road in the gutter, and Lars Bohm got in the breakaway. And I felt like the announcers didn't really know who he was because, in a, especially in a pre Wout, pre Vanderpool world the announcers were not as aware of cyclocross as a discipline but uh it was rainy it was slick it was muddy and bohm never even attacked he just kind of powered away from them and that seems like lance is doing it right now who's this in the red going up is that a nashville local rider maybe on the front man if I got to say, if I was Nashville local, you do not want to be the ones chasing this back. You got to get behind that Legion train and force them to do it. All right, let's see who all we got here. Hate it. I'm a Lurvy brother. There's Connor Saley. We were just, someone was talking about how he's good in the rain. He's the uh, first guy. Looks like he's trying to go across, but he's kind of just welding it back. Seems like he's got three or four guys on his wheel, maybe a rider from uh, SCS Gutenplan, or nope, that's another Avolo rider, and then the whole Legion train behind them, all in enough contact that, that they're still all drafting a little bit. And does Blazers not have, I don't think Blazers has anybody up there, so they can't let this go. Especially with when Legion puts someone in the someone in the move, rather than being the team that's just chasing the move down, I think the other teams you really start to scramble because after all these seasons, yeah, they're not working together well. A Volo riders trying to flick people through. Looks like they're making Lance ride. Seems like some other guys are about to make contact. Maybe the um Maybe the Connor Saley group is about to make contact. Hopefully the Saley group makes contact. Saley just goes straight to the front and just keeps the pace going. It's a real bummer when you do a big effort to bridge to a group up the road. And right when you get there, they're looking at each other. And the whole thing slows down. And it's tempting to just tack on to the back when that happens. But if you can swing around and go to the front and actually inject some pace into that group, sometimes that's enough to keep things rolling and... That each of them just wants someone to take take authority and take a good pull on the front. So sometimes if if you can be the one who will do that. Looks like we got Butcher Box trying to chase it back now. I think they're realizing they missed it. I would guess that's Movenzada. That looks like Movenzada from the way he's uh, gritting the teeth and swinging the head around. 
if this were to split, it would definitely be Project Echelon's responsibility to get it back. They got the leader. They got no one even no no one up here. Um, I did not see the finish of the women's race. I'm sorry. I was setting all of this stuff up. Um, I was watching it with like four or five laps to go, and the Butcher Box women's squad was looking good. They had just brought Skylar Schneider back, and that was the last thing I saw. I was uh, pulling up the start list for this race and stuff. I My guess would be that Legion won the field sprint, though. It looked like it was coming to a field sprint. And I did see... I saw, three, I saw like a Legion rider, a DNA rider, and a Butcher Box rider getting interviewed. Kendall Ryan. Okay. So Sky Schneider was up the road solo pretty late in the race. Butcher Box brought her back. And then uh, Kendall cleaned up the sprint. Here we go. A Volo rider. I was talking about him a minute ago. A Volo rider lighting it up. Sounds like we got a cash premium. Yeah, two hundred dollar cash premium on this lap. I don't know if that's going to motivate them any more than they're already motivated, but maybe we'll get a uh, sprint for the point spream, point spream, and then an attack off the back of that. That's always a good. That's always a good move when you get one of these big cash premiums that people really go for is to go off the back. So someone sprints. It kind of comes back together after the sprint, and that's when you attack because everyone who went for the sprint, everyone who's up at the very, very front of the race is tired from going for the sprint. So everyone who's in position to respond immediately is going to be a little cooked and not not looking to respond. Saley up front going for it, maybe. That's uh, whoever said Saley's good in the rain definitely called it. I feel like this is the most we're 20 minutes in and this is the most most I've seen of him this season. So that's awesome. Maybe he's totally past uh, whatever whatever injuries he got last year at Salt Lake. Good to see him doing well. Looks like one of the Cliff Bar riders has gone flat. <laughs> it looks like maybe they got a rotor situation or something, different rotor size, something. Oh, no. Primal Audi Denver rider down. Oh, no. Brandon Fury. Hope he's all right. That's the, uh, oh, no. We'll see if we get a replay here, but that is huge. That is our series leader, Brandon Fury. Looks like, oh, there he goes. Primal Audi Denver rider right in front of Fury. Looks like Fury mostly keeps it upright. Yeah, yeah. He's okay. He's fine. Really good. Really good save. He'll get free laps and be back in. His bike is going to be fine. Really good save by him. So, looked like the primal guy just kind of leaned back. This is a mistake that, like, it's common in skiing that, like, if you get scared of going down the hill, you kind of lean back away from the hill but then you lose control. It's got kind of the same thing in these wet corners. It's like if you get scared of leaning into the corner, you kind of lean back away from the corner, and then you don't have weight on your front wheel pushing it down, and the front wheel slides out. Looks like what happened. He kind of leaned away from it and lost that front wheel. He's going to get a free lap and be right back in. He's, he's a little shaken up, but that was a great save from Fury and from the butcher box guy who just squeaked around it there. Hopefully we don't see any more of that today. I don't want to curse him, but it seems like the ra racing has been a little cleaner and a little safer uh, since the the dust up at um at Salt Lake. Yeah, it was after Salt Lake, right? Here we go, another attack from Legion. Uh, this is a different a different strategy from Legion. I think that's maybe Hoover. The the two sort of smaller built guys are Hoover and Freire are the the two Legion riders that are not built like absolute refrigerators. So they're not even small; they're just small for Legion riders. Looks like we got Clever Martinez on the wheel, uh, Ethan Crane, I think, from uh, no, no relation, C R A I N E. I'm C R A I N. 
they're taking it right to the gutter. We got an Empire Rider in there. Uh, Empire, new team out of Colorado, but um, a guy that I used to race with when I was coming up here, uh, Pat Casey, I think maybe even started that team. He's definitely on that team, but that's uh, why I know about them. And then they're sponsored by the same coffee company that sponsors my road team out of Birmingham, uh, Domestique Coffee Roasters. Sick coffee, highly recommended. Google that. Bike bike dudes. Um, but it's cool to see Empire getting up there this year. For, first year as a team and uh, not afraid to get in these moves at the front. Ooh. Yeah, they're taking this to the... Yeah, there's the Empire Rider. Two wheel drift and he saves it. That's uh that's pretty solid. I don't know what tires they're on. I don't, I'm not sure if that's a good advertisement for those tires or a bad advertisement, but he he saved it. He's uh really skillful riding from whoever that is on Empire. E M P Y R E. They're in those like uh, cotton candy tie dye color kits. Looks like we're getting the mid race. Point sprint. I can't believe we're already mid race right now. This this is flying by. But I guess we are. I guess this one is actually an hour, not a seventy minutes or not an hour plus or whatever. And coming right off the back of that prem, right off the back of that prem we had a second ago. This is where things could start to get ragged, and we could see one of those, uh, like a Frank Travieso move, the kind of thing we've been seeing. Not not super late in the race, kind of a mid race move that gets actually gets some daylight and goes up the road. Uh, not seeing a ton of best buddies today, although some of their success, I feel like, has been their ability to just materialize at the front as a group when they need to. I'm hearing hearing a lot of brakes squeal there. I wonder if Clever, I see oh, Empire Rider going down. I was just praising that two-wheel drift. There's still an Empire Rider up here, fourth wheel, but it looks like one of them went down just a second ago. Point sprint. Looks like, looks like Fury's just not going to go for it. But I think that's why they got Ethan Crane up there. They want Ethan Crane to just suck up those points. And if, if Crane Crane's in fifth in this competition, the sprint competition, if he can just move up, uh, that's that's dual purpose for them. That's that's backing up Fury, getting another guy into into position in that competition in case something happens to him, and it's also taking those first place points away from other teams. Although it looks like Legion is not gonna let uh, not gonna let Crane just roll for it. They're swarming him. Yeah, Crane is shuffled back to about seventh or eighth wheel here. I don't know why they keep cutting to this Empire Rider who's getting up and going to the pit. We don't really need to see that, especially when we're coming to a point sprint. I want to see what happens. Interesting three man lead out from Legion right here. Looks like Clever Martinez might be going for it. Clever's been moving up in the uh, in the standings. Let's see where he's at right now. So after this point sprint, I'll put the uh, I'll put the points on the screen, and we can look at where the standings are at for the overall. Because these points do count both for the sprint competition and for the overall competition. So the sprint point competition doesn't include the finish points, but the overall does include the sprint points, if that makes sense. Yeah, Clever, uh, I was just saying it. Clever is definitely, it seems like he's gone up a level again this season. I was talking earlier this season about how he was racing better, I thought, or more aggressively or something on Rockland Velo last year when he was kind of under-teamed, and then this year moving to Blazers. It wasn't that he was doing bad. It was just that, like, I kind of expected him to be maybe the guy who starts starts winning some of these races this year, and it hadn't happened until recently. But I think he's got a little injection of uh, confidence or something recently. Definitely feeling frisky. Legion has really lined it up for the point sprint, which is surprising to me because I don't think they're even... 
contesting the series like as a series they're really only concerned with yeah, I'm looking at the points right now, and I don't see any Legion riders in the points, and I think that's because they haven't paid into the series as a series. Oh, okay. I did not know that Ethan Crane rode for Automatic in uh, Birmingham in 21, but I do remember that race. Um, I was there. That was a good one. Yeah, so Ethan Cranes moved up to second in the green jersey, the sprint points competition. So they've really hedged their bets there. Project Echelon has. They've got Fury in first. It seems like Legion is, is taking no chances here with what I was just talking about, with the possibility of as we get into this mid-race area and people start getting ragged, yeah, that's what I think, Ben. I think maybe what I was talking about earlier, which is that uh, things could things could start getting away in this period of the race where we've had back-to-back-to-back creams. We're 30 minutes in. People are getting gassed. This is where some gaps could start forming if they're not pacing. So I wonder if they just said, like, from the midpoints mid-race point cream on, that's where we take the front, rather than doing the thing they did going back to like Tulsa last year, which I think was kind of the shock and awe campaign no one was prepared for, which was they just took the front like from the beginning of the race and never let it go. It seems like they're more concerned with holding the front now and not letting anything get away. Earlier in the race, they were chasing things and they sent Lance up the road. I wonder if they sent Lance up the road or if Lance just went up the road uh, of his own volition, if that was just a... a bike racer brain move on his point on his part i mean uh, let's see so here are uh, let's see the uh this is a cleaner look at the overall points so this is before this race but we got fury rodriguez has moved into second Fury has almost an unassailable lead in first with 465 points, and uh, Rodriguez has 296. That's a pretty big lead, especially with only this race and two more, so three total as of those points totals. And we're not seeing Luke Lamperti, so I think he's going to drop back out of fifth. Uh, I guess Trinity... Trinity's not really an American-based team, so I think they had him do some crits just to defend that jersey. But I, I'm assuming he's back on uh, some Trinity duty. So it's really, I think we're going to see the the two, three, and four battle. I think Gibbons probably wants to move back up in that, although I think he wants a uh, a win more than he wants to move up in the overall. He's won the overall of back when it was USA Crits, but the National Crit Series a couple times. But Gibbons. Gibbons and Martinez are only 10 points apart, and they're both only 26 points from uh, Rodriguez, who's still out. So I think we're going to see a change. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, Ben. I think Lance uh, Lance is just a bike racer, so I think he sensed a slowdown, and he saw an open door, and he just went through it. I don't think that was necessarily part of the Legion plan. I think that what we're seeing now is the Legion plan. But I do think the other teams, like seeing seeing Lance go up the road, and that's not normally what Legion does, thought maybe like, whoa, things this race is going crazy. Like maybe Legion does not have control. Because really, Legion only ever starts sending guys up the road into moves when they kind of lose control of the front, whether that's because the course is so technical or bad weather. Or really, I've noticed it happening the most to Legion them losing control of the race when it's super hot and the race is a little bit long. It seems like, I mean, that's just a combination that makes it really hard to ride on the front all day and keep the pace high enough that you're going to keep attacks from going up the road like what Legion likes to do. 
it looks like uh, a Volo rider was maybe looking for an open door there, didn't find one, but he's moving up alongside the Legion train on the outside. He's going to, I assume, have the door slammed on him several times, but yeah, here he goes. See, he's going over the, yeah, over the top. They tried to shut the door on him. I was saying that the Avolo Riders, regardless of how cursed these moves are, they're going to keep ripping them. It looks like he didn't even get any uh, real separation, though. He's got Hate It right on the wheel. And Hate It's just going to stay with it. It's so hard to get over the top. You saw him for two corners, kind of trying to set up next to the Legion train, and then from the exit of one corner to the entrance of the next corner, Legion was swinging over, and it was like he could just barely slip by, but by the time he got by, he didn't have room to create a big gap. It's just so hard uh, once Legion fully forms on the front, because you got to get past, they got six guys riding on the front. In the span of one corner to corner, you got to get past all those six guys and then get a gap. And they're already setting a pace that's strong enough that makes it really hard to get past them. So Yeah, they're talking about a butcher box rider who was looking at going, man, this this corner with the gutter pan right here, I feel like on the last lap we're going to have to really watch out for that. That's going to be a bad spot. Not seeing a lot of Gibbons. I, we saw him really early on. He was up there constantly, and I'm like not seeing any orange up here. So I don't know if he's just... He was looking a little, a little worn down toward the end of Intelligentsia. Um, I thought this might be a good race for him, although it seems like he maybe doesn't have a full team here. Oh, a Volo rider down. Same spot. Seems like there's there's not even paint on the road there. That happens a lot when there's a, one of those paint stripes that the car is supposed to pull up and stop at. But, okay, Daniel Swan is with him, and they're on the back. Maybe they got a plan to tail gun until five to go or something, and Swan's going to just do a seppuku dig to move move him up, move Tom up on the outside or something. Maybe they've got a new a new plan. Like I was saying, it's so hard to get over the top of this Legion train, but really, they don't have to get Tom over the top. They just have to get Tom to the back of the Legion train. And then he's going to have to battle with Clever, and he's going to have to battle with uh, Fury. But that that the back of the legion train is the toughest real estate to hold in the crit racing world right now for sure looks like he slid a little bit gabriel shipley don't don't know him looks like he's calling it a day though that didn't look like he's going for the free lap i think that was mo venzada no maybe not one of the butcher box riders sitting on the back with uh with Gibbons. It does look like Gibbons is like absolutely last wheel just back there punching tickets. Looks like about forty percent of the field has been pulled at this point. I would imagine that uh forty percent of the starters will finish on the lead lap. Oh no, yeah, that's much smaller field. We're probably down to forty percent already. So it might get even smaller than this. It does seem like it's not raining anymore so the it's kind of drying up a little bit yeah i don't think he's getting back in the pit i don't know why we're lingering on these shots of guys who have crashed and are just rolling easy like let's stay let's stay with the race especially when we got drone shots like this get that drone a little lower though it seems like i think they're getting local drone operators in in each city but the coolest ones have been the the drone shots where they've gotten right there where you almost feel like you're in in the peloton although seeing the shape of it from overhead can be kind of revealing as to uh where the speed's at and what's going on what we're seeing right now was a single line of legion and then it kind of triangles out from there with everyone fighting here we go best buddies flyer oh Ruben Campagnoni on the front from uh, Best Buddies. Haven't seen much Best Buddies tonight. Not sure who they're going to race for. Ben, you're saying it's raining again? It's tough. It's tough for me to see because it's... Uh, I'm 
looking at such a small 720p screen, I'm always like, is that rain or is it not rain? I don't know. I'm I'm looking in like the street light to see if I'm seeing little spots coming down. I'm not seeing the big spray off the tires. Yeah, okay, in this shot you can see the rain is coming down again. I'm not seeing the the huge spray off the tires I was seeing right when they started. It rained pretty hard toward the end of the women's race. Hope everyone keeps it upright. I would hate to see a crash marred finish here. A Volo rider coming up. Here he goes. Looks like he might actually have separation with maybe a Malervi brother. That's uh that's a good move. They actually did get separation this time. That's that's a first. Not a first, but there have been several attempts at moves recently that have not gone because they've only gotten uh, two or three bike links up the road from the Legion train. And then, you know, Legion's kind of in the slipstream and it sort of just welds itself back together. Looks like Legion is not going to give them any rope, though. We're within 10 to go, so they're not going to give anything too much daylight. They're going to keep it pretty fast from here. They didn't, Legion didn't wait and then take the front the way that they have to uh to let things go up the road. Yeah, it looks like this kid is going ballistic and he's just not going anywhere. Even with the help of the uh Malerby brother. I believe that's one of the Malerbys up there with him. Yeah, that field is tiny now. I'm not sure I I would love a rundown of just who all is, is still in contact right now. Um, interesting that we haven't seen more from Best Buddy. That makes me wonder if Best Buddy's plan isn't to do kind of the maneuver that was like the Legion train killer earlier this season where I believe it was with about five to go. They, they, they saved all their bullets and with about five to go, they assembled toward the front, moved past the Legion train and then they only had to do five laps. So you would say, like, why would that work? If Legion takes the front halfway through the race, they have to set pace for half of the entire race. If Best Buddies takes it with five to go, and they've done a good job of saving energy a little farther back in the pack, uh, they're going to be fresher, and then they're going to have more of a, like, VO2 max level pop. Each of them, if they could get all six riders up there with five to go, each of them really only has to do one lap on the front and then they have a lead out man for the last lap. So, I mean, think about doing one turn. If one of these laps is about two minutes, think about doing your two minute max power one time. That's going to be faster than the pace that these Legion guys can rotate um, consistently for half the race. Although, Legion has done a remarkably good job throughout the last two seasons of keeping the pace high enough that nobody can get away, even sometimes for entire races. But I think the rain may may mix that up a little bit. Um, and other teams are just kind of they're they've read the Legion playbook at this point and they're kind of finding the the ways they can try to poke little holes. Yeah, it looks like Danny Estevez is moving up. Uh, the Blazers train, there's there's Tom. It looks like Tom has maybe lost Dan Swan. Tom, that's the automatic guys. So it looks like, looks like it's just Tom on the back of this whole thing. It's going to be too hard for him to move up with eight to go, especially in this rain, I think. So there's a point sprint on this lap. This is the at the top of seven to go. There is a, a point sprint. Ethan Crane has moved up. Um, okay, Swan's a few wheels up. That's interesting. Maybe maybe they're going to do something. Maybe they're going to move uh, move Tom up. It seems like maybe too late in the game. I would think that you would have had to start start moving up uh, significantly sooner. I'm looking for those automatic jerseys to try and see where they are. Gibbons has to move up the next two laps to have a shot. Yeah, 100%. Because 
something is going to start happening. The The battle behind the Legion train is about to become so hot that even to get up into that zone is going to be nearly impossible. It looks like we've only got like 30 riders left in this race, maybe. I, my 40% finish rate might have even been generous. We might end up with like 25% of riders finishing. I'm impressed how many fans are out here despite the rain. It's pretty awesome that the Littleton fans are staying out in the rain, braving the conditions, hanging out. Project Echelon up here getting Fury into position. So they got the overall leader. Ooh, loose bottle there. I hope somebody grabs that. People are starting to ditch bottles. Even though not an uphill finish, weight's not going to have a huge bearing on it. But I guess, you know, you don't want to carry anything extra. Although some frames are more arrow if you do have a bottle in the in the triangle. It depends frame to frame and bottle to bottle, cage to cage, but I, th I think I've seen three or four riders eject bottles. Like it's you see that on uphill finishes more. Maybe this is one of those things where the the finish is a little more uphill than we think it is. That road pan is gonna be it's gonna be gnarly on the last lap. I think I'm seeing Gibbons moving up. I I saw an automatic jersey, what looked like mid-pack. So it seems like maybe he's gone from back, absolute back, to the mid middle of this pack. I guess we're watching the bottle throw here. Yeah, bottle chunk. I don't know. I don't know why we're seeing the uh, slow-mo replay of the bottle throw, but Legion is doing the full Legion thing from from here i think they're going to take it down to like probably five to go four to go and then start doing their full gas final pulls where like lance will do a pull as hard as he can pull off free arrow will do a pull as hard as he can pull off um keep going like that i'm ass i'm assuming ty magner will be their last man probably gavin hoover leading him out and Magnus going to be hard to beat. Like I said it earlier, I think he's probably the strongest rider in America right now. So somebody's going to have to be really, really clever for Magner not to win it. Now, it looks like Martinez has been extremely clever this whole race. He's been He's been up far enough that he's not been fighting the accordion effect, but he's also not been doing work. He just threw his bottle, too. Everybody's getting rid of bottles. Does this finish way more uphill than I think it is? Has anyone seen this course? Sometimes the cameras flatten it out. And, like, uh, I know Aniston finished, the uh, Sunny King finished way more uphill yeah. in real life than you think it is. It's really like 2 or 3% drag that whole time. On camera, it looks very flat. Maybe this is one of those situations, and that's why everybody's getting rid of, rid of bottles. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I think if I had to put money on a dark horse, I mean, if I was making the betting odds for this race, Magner would be the like a two to one favorite right now. Someone on Legion, if if you could place a bet just on Legion, I would say that would be probably three to one odds. But if I was picking a dark horse, um, it's got to be Clever Martinez. I think he's just looking strong. I think Fury is going to go for the sprint, but Fury is more concerned with consistency than winning a race. Empty bottles can rattle out of the cage. If empty bottles are rattling out of your cage, you got the wrong bottle cages, JK. Um, ooh, very spicy move from Avolo here. Five laps to go. Two Avolo riders going together, and they're just going to go all in here. I don't think this is actually going to go, but I truly respect the hustle because it's crazy. What are the armbands for? I'm not sure which arm... Oh, those are part of the kit. Those are not... Like, on the, the Legion Riders right there, those are just... Uh, those are just a, a stripe on the sleeve of the kit. That's just Rafa letting you know that it's a Rafa kit. Um, yeah, big respect to the uh, these two Evolo Riders, because that's a, that's a crazy move to just go full send with five to go with two of their riders. JK, the cheapest 
bottle cages are actually the best because they're the metal ones and you can just bend them tighter. So, oh yeah, he's got those uh, 38 C bars. Yeah, he can't, he can't, uh, he's not going to hold that, but definitely respect him trying for sure. I want to say that that Best Buddies is going to try something, but I don't see them. They're just not together. They're not at the front of this race. I don't know what has happened to Best Buddies here. I mean, I know Rodriguez is out injured and uh, Hernandez is out suspended. So maybe maybe that has put a damper on their enthusiasm for this for this race. But yeah, it looks like we got Frere on the front. I think they're probably going to start. Legion is going to start doing the thing I'm thinking right now where they take a pull that is as hard as they, absolutely as hard as they can, and each rider who pulls for Legion empties the tank, pulls over, and they're just done. They're they're out. Yeah, getting some Ty Magner stats here. Uh, how long is Hernandez suspended for? I think it's six weeks. Somebody correct me if that's wrong, but the Hernandez suspension off the top of my head Kind of sucks for him because he uh, because uh, it didn't really matter for Williams because Williams was going to Commonwealth Games anyway, and you know USA Cycling can't ban him because he's uh, Belize registered, so that's why he's doing Commonwealth Games. But it stings a little more for Hernandez. Um, if you know about the fight, you've probably seen the video of the fight. Um, there's like the perspective over the shoulder of the women's interview, and then there's uh, someone had a, a phone video on Instagram kind of thing. It seemed like Justin swung first, but I don't know. I, it seems like maybe you don't, don't see the whole thing, but... Ooh, it is raining so hard. So that's Swan That's uh, that I'm seeing. Someone in the chat was saying that's Dan Swan from Automatic moving up on the left as we see it, right? Rider's right side, our left side. Um, it looks like he's about 10th, 15th wheel right here, three to go. And then I guess that's Gibbons still on the back of this now. Blazer's coming over the top next lap. I think Clever's plan really... He, I think Clever now knows that Ty is the guy who's going to sprint, and he's going to try to stick Ty and go over the top of Ty in the sprint. I don't think they're going to try to get cute with anything before the sprint. Um, I think if anyone was going to try that, it was going to be Best Buddies, and I don't think – I'm not seeing Best Buddies massing in numbers. Maybe I am seeing more um, more Blazers up front. No, Clever's the first Blazers rider. Clever's just going to try to uh, – yeah, you're saying Clever needs help. I think Clever actually was riding better on Rockland, much like Gibbons. Also, they're those are two guys who are just really good at freelancing. They're good at knowing who the other train that's going to go for it is. I think that's Sal Saley right on Martinez' wheel. Saley may just be sweeping for Martinez because I don't think that. Uh, I don't think that Legion is going to run a, a sweeper like they do sometimes where the last guy on their train is actually sitting on their sprinter and he sits up when their sprinter goes or he just doesn't follow the surge when their sprinter goes. Um, I think Clever is going to be able to read that and know who's sprinting and who's a sweeper if they do try to pull that. That's interesting that we got multiple trains with multiple sweepers. That makes sense, Ben, that that's yeah, Gibbons moving up. Looks like Gibbons is right there. Gibbons is right behind Martinez. Wow. That's impressive. Just e even if Gibbons doesn't do anything in this sprint, the fact that he, what was it, like seven laps to go that we were saying, like, he's got to move up right now or he's done. And the fact that while the speed was as high as it has been for this entire time. Yeah, I, it's like I said. Two to one, Ty Magner right now. 
Um, it would be awesome to see. I mean, I like Ty. He's having a crazy season. I would love to see someone challenge him, but I don't know if anybody can. Theory has a has a lead out rider. So who's going to be able to hang on? Looks like, all right, Martinez is right on the back of the Legion train. And then we got, uh, I need a side on shot. Martinez, and then we got Project Echelon Riders, someone, and then Fury. So someone's going to lead out Fury. And then on the back of that, we've got uh, Thomas Gibbons. And Legion is going to start burning riders. We saw one Legion rider pull off already. I think we're going to see another between these two corners. Just kick it. He's going to pull off, I think. Maybe not. Maybe he's going to take it. They're taking this Legion train a little deeper than they normally do, it looks like. Uh, Clever. looks Yeah, it looks like uh, Saley has already lost Clever's wheel. He's been, been flicked or something. Legion train's in full effect. Clever's moving up. Clever's in the train. Clever's not falling for it. Wow. Hoover and Cowan are going for it. Magner said, wow. Tricky move by Legion there. Everyone, including me, was looking at Ty Magner. Magner didn't sprint. It was uh, Cowan and Hoover. They, uh, I don't want to say they let Cowan have it. I guess they just designated that Cowan was going to sprint tonight, which was a savvy move because with how, I mean, they even had a graphic ready for the end there for how dominant uh, Magner's season has been. So everybody, including Clever, was looking at at Magner. And then in the finish, Magner was sweeping. So good to see a good clean finish in the rain, though. I was worried that last lap might get hectic. But yeah, Legion, I, I thought it was weird they were letting the train, they were Normally they do more fully burning guys pulling off and they're done to where at the end of the last lap there's really only two of them, three of them left. They got four here and the front two were sprinting and the other two just let the gap go. So gaps were big coming out of that last corner. Yeah, Martinez was already five, six, seven bike lengths off. I didn't see a crash in the last corner. It looked like uh, pretty clean to me. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Anybody see a crash in the last corner? That's a savvy move by Legion. I don't know what what else you can say there. That's um, oh, yeah. Looks like some. You're right. Maybe that looks like it could be Movenzada. Yep. Well, I spoke too soon. It was not a clean last lap. Uh, let's see who it is. Uh, I'm not seeing a number. Not seeing a, a clear shot of who that was on Butcher Box. Looked like they were all right. They were up and walking around, which is good to see. We've seen some heavy crashes this season, and luckily, it seemed like most of the ones this race were just individual riders sliding out, but Nobody fully bit it the way that, that they have in other races this season. Nobody broke anything and didn't look like. Yeah. Another sweep. I mean, I think Best Buddies was the team that was going to be able to contest them. And injury, suspension, seems like they're scrambling a little bit. Um, I didn't see anything from Ama. I feel like Ama is fire and ice. He's either like, he's either completely on and he's killing it, getting in the moves, winning from the breakaway, whatever, or he's just totally, it's like his night is either goes right or it doesn't. But 
Yeah, I don't know. Best Buddy season might be over. It's going to be interesting to see if anybody can... Uh, I feel like Gibbons wants a win so bad. He wants an outright win before this season is over. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get it. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get a full squad to one of these races. I don't know why Aldo is not here with him. I feel like he's going to need, especially with uh, especially with Ed Veal out, he's going to need Aldo as a, he needs at least one diesel who can kind of be the enforcer for the race. Anyway, we got another Legion sweep. Um, We'll see if anybody can challenge them in the last few races. It's weird with a team that is not in the series. Yeah, I don't know. Not in the series, winning so much of the series. Has anybody heard anything about an Into the Lions Den this year? I haven't heard anything about that happening, although it basically happened like during cross season last year, so maybe that's the plan is that you know, the open spot they found on the calendar is just, like, super late. So maybe we'll find out soon. But anyway, thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Fun to watch a race. Um, glad everybody made it more or less unscathed in, in the rain race, which can always be a little dicey. Oh, they canceled it. Did, did they have a date on the calendar and then they canceled it? I feel like I just didn't hear anything about it this year. Interesting. I guess I need to Google that. That also might throw my, my theory on why they're not bought into this series. Maybe they will be next season. Maybe next season they will buy into the ACC and then we'll see them at the top of the top of the leaderboard. No problem. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, appreciate it. You know, like and subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. See you guys next time. Later.